When one of my sons was in elementary school, he attended a private school from K through fourth grade. His teachers told me they believed he had ADHD and wanted me to take him to a doctor to have him diagnosed. I knew that if I did that, the doctor and his teachers would label him that way and they would begin to pressure me to medicate him and I was not going to do that. My husband and I both were determined not to medicate our son for those kinds of issues. So we worked with the teachers and they were understanding of our decision, but every so often one of them would again suggest that we get him diagnosed with the obvious idea that he would be medicated if we did. One day I served as a substitute teacher and he was in my class. I observed firsthand what was going on and why they were concerned. We were reading a history lesson and I was having each student take turns reading a paragraph as we went through the chapter. When it came to Ben, which is my son, he was way ahead, about two pages. I had to direct him to the paragraph he was supposed to read because he was not with the class. After the readings were done, I asked the class questions in the back of the chapter and the discussion ensued and he was a part of that discussion. We finished that subject and moved on to the next. In the middle of the next subject, Ben raised his hand to ask a question about the history lesson we had discussed probably 10 minutes before that. He was deep in thought about that subject and had obviously become obsessed with thinking deeper and deeper about what interested him. Basically, he was not with the class at all. He wasn't causing a disruption, except that when he was taking, you know, raising his hand, he was taking the class back to what he had been thinking about rather than what I as the teacher was trying to guide everyone to do. What I realized was that Ben was having a very hard time focusing on what he should be focusing on and going along with the class. If he wasn't interested in something we were discussing, his mind would seek out what he was interested in and lock in and focus on that. If we talked about something he was interested in, he couldn't seem to move off that subject to the next one. In other words, he had no discipline about how to control his thoughts and focus. And in a classroom situation, that can be very difficult for the teacher. This, of course, made the teacher want help in getting him to focus and stay with the class. So was that a situation where we should have put him on medication? drug him up so he would stay with the class and not think as deeply about something in order for him to be more malleable for the sake of the schoolwork and classroom etiquette? My husband and I decided the answer to that was no. The problem wasn't that he couldn't focus, because the truth was, if it was a subject he was really interested in, his focus was so strong that we couldn't get him off of it. The problem was that he had no understanding that he should focus and stay with the class even when he didn't want to, and he needed to understand that it was important for him to learn to do so. His natural inclination was to allow his mind to flow wherever it took him until he settled on his own interest, rather than concentrate on the things he needed to in order to be able to function in a classroom situation. We decided that homeschooling was going to be better for him and started that the next year. What I found was he had the same problem at home in that he would obsess over subjects he loved and wouldn't seem to be able to focus on the things he didn't. I learned that what he needed was discipline over his own mind. He needed to train himself to focus, even if he didn't want to, in order to accomplish learning things he wasn't interested in. The fact of the matter is, we all need to learn things sometimes that we aren't interested in and focus on things we don't care about to get through life successfully. And to give you even more background about Ben, he also is visually impaired, has been diagnosed with ADHD and ASD, which used to be called Asperger's Syndrome. I'm only telling you that because we never put him on any medications for any of these conditions, and he grew up and went on to earn a double major in software development and philosophy and has lived on his own for many years. Even though we raised our son, who was born in 1986, when the conventional wisdom among the experts was that children who have focus problems need to be medicated, we knew that this was not the case. It is not always wise to listen to experts, as I have often said on this channel. They are commonly late to the game of common sense. It has now come to a point 
where if a child misbehaves or has a hard time sitting still, they are labeled with ADD or ADHD and given medications. A child does not need medications to learn how to focus, sit still, or behave themselves, even if they seem to struggle with it. They need teaching and training in a loving and understanding way, with clear goals and guidance as they learn how to focus and concentrate. And children are capable of training themselves to focus without medications, even if they have these struggles. I have recently found that even neuroscientists are discovering that people can learn to train their brain to focus when they have been diagnosed with ADD or ADHD, and the drugs are not necessary. In fact, drugs only mask some of the symptoms of focus deficit problems and can make the patients drug dependent. Drugs don't solve the problem. Training the brain to focus works and solves the problem. There were five things that worked well for us and I wanted to share those with you now. Number one, counsel. Basically, we communicated with him that every person has strengths and weaknesses. He has many strengths. But one of his weaknesses is that he has a difficult time directing his mind to tasks that do not interest him. This is something he needs to recognize and work on. Giving a child information is one of the most effective steps in helping a child overcome behavior problems. If a child understands the problem clearly and realizes they can learn to work on the problem, they will feel a sense of empowerment and respect from the parent who shares the information with them in a loving, kind, and detailed way. So we first gave him counsel about the problem he has and talked to him about different strategies to overcome it. And we told him he was capable of doing so. That is very important. If you tell a child they can't concentrate and need these meds to do it, they will not feel empowered at all but instead they will feel weak, dependent, and incapable of controlling their own mind. Number two, exercise. We made sure our son was outside and playing in the yard or at the park for a good amount of time each day. Children who have trouble focusing need plenty of physical exercise. This helps them get rid of all the energy that their bodies are holding in that can cause them to have a more difficult time focusing when it's time to sit and do so. Being outside, running around, playing active games, etc., can really help. If your child is having a hard time focusing, make sure he or she has plenty of physical activity. The more the better. Number three, set up challenges. A child who has these kinds of problems needs to feel that they can accomplish goals successfully. We gave our son challenges that were right on the edge of his abilities that we knew if he worked at it, he could accomplish. For example, he loved everything about computers. In fact, today, as I said, he's a software developer. Since we had started homeschooling, it was easy to find challenging games on the computer that helped him learn skills while at the same time teaching lessons. This was another confirmation that he can focus. He was so focused on the learning games that it was hard to get his attention off of them when he was concentrating on trying to beat a certain level or whatever. We also had him involved in a scouting program and he had challenges to accomplish goals by earning merit badges. Find out what your child is interested in and set up challenges for him to achieve goals that will give him a sense of accomplishment and reward for focusing on the challenge and conquering it. Number four, make a task list. We had a written task list for our son to do every day. Because a child who has a hard time focusing can get lost in an activity, they commonly will not get tasks done they're supposed to do. They may have a list in their head and know what they're supposed to do and accomplish, but they lose focus. For example, they may go to make their bed, but see a toy that distracts them and end up spending the morning playing with that toy, even though they had every intention of making their bed when they walked in the room. Helping them with clear instructions and a daily written task list can help them because they can easily be directed back to the list if they're starting to lose focus. Reminding them to focus on the written list of things they need to do and praising them if they are able to accomplish that list without being distracted is a good way to teach them to discipline their mind. Number five, 
creative opportunities. Like I said, our son loved computers and he loved to create things on the computer. A child with a focusing problem will greatly benefit from a way to express their creativity. Maybe they're interested in drawing or painting. Maybe they enjoy dance or even creating Lego structures or writing songs or poems. Any of these things and many more can be ways for them to exercise their creativity. Creativity is much like physical exercise. Just like energy can build up in a child's body and they need to get that out so they can sit still at other times, so is creativity inside of a child, especially one who has a focusing problem. If they can tap into what kind of creative endeavors excite them and regularly act on those things, it can really help that they have had that creative outlet when they need to focus on other things. Parents, believe me, your child does not need medications for a diagnosis of ADD or ADHD. You can help them learn to discipline their own mind and it will greatly benefit them in the long run. I'd love to read your experiences or questions in the comments below. You can also visit me at my website, mommyanswerlady.com. Parents, you can do this. Thanks for watching and please remember to like, share, and subscribe.